Now let us talk about how to measure income inequality. So there are four criteria of measuring income inequality. So whatever index which we are going to create, which is going to measure income inequality, it has to satisfy these four properties or these four principles. These are anonymity principle, population principle, relative income principle, and delta principle. So what is anonymity principle going to tell you? Anonymity principle just says this, when you are finding out income inequality, so you are only interested in the distribution of income. How that income is distributed. You are not interested, is interested in who is earning that income. That is not your focus. Your focus is only on income inequality. So supposedly if people, they are earning different levels of income in the country and you shuffle them completely, then also income inequality should remain same. For example, if I am earning 100 and you are earning 200, right? So if we shuffle, let's say I am earning 200 and you are earning 100, income inequality should remain same. It should not change. Focus is not on who is earning what. Focus is on what is the income level? How is that distributed? So if you arrange income level of the individuals from lowest to the highest, in a way you have arranged people from poorest to the richest. That's what you have done. So this principle, it also ensures that the characteristics such as gender, race, caste, these are irrelevant in measuring the income inequality. So what is important is how that income is distributed. We are not focusing on who is earning what. The identity of the individual, identity of the income earner is not. Then the second principle of income inequality measurement is, supposedly if you have two populations. In one population, you have n individuals. You copied this population with two n individuals. And this another population has same income pattern. So supposedly in the first population, you have 10 individuals. You have cloned this population. Now they become 20 individuals. They have same income pattern. So income inequality, which was there in the first population, that will remain same as the income inequality with two n population. It doesn't matter size of the population doesn't matter. What matters is the relative proportion of income distribution. How that income is relatively distributed. That is what is written, right? What, what doesn't matter is the size of the population, scale of the population. Then you have relative income principle. Now, relative income principle says what? Supposedly you have two income distribution. First is the original income distribution. And the second one is the distribution which you have obtained by scaling up everybody's income up or down to the same percentage. For example, in the first distribution, my income was 100. Your income is 200. In the second distribution, everybody's income is 10% more. So my income would become 110 and your income will become 220. Income inequality doesn't change. It remains same. So main point is that the income levels per se are not important. What is important is the income distribution while you're measuring income inequality. So when you have obtained the new income distribution by scaling up everybody's income up or down by the same percentage, income inequality doesn't change. Dalton's principle. Now what is Dalton's principle telling you? It is telling you supposedly you have an income distribution in which individual 1 is earning y1, individual 2 is earning y2, and so on to y n. And let us for simplicity also assume that they are all arranged in the ascending order, from lowest to the highest. One thing, simple. Just say, my income is 100, your income is 200, and so on to 1000, let's say. Supposedly, my income, I am individual i, and my income is less than equal to your income, your individual j. And we do a regressive transfer. Regressive transfer is from the poorest individual, it is going to the richer individual, right? From not richer means poorer individual, it is going to not poorer means richer individual. That is a regressive transfer. Who is already rich, you are transferring income to him, taking income from somebody who doesn't have income. Now, this is my initial income distribution where individual 1 was earning y1, individual 2 is earning y2 and so on to i am earning yi, you are earning yj and so on. 
I have obtained the new distribution from the old distribution by regressive transfers. How have I done this? We have in this new distribution, delta amount is taken from poorer individual, I, and delta amount is added to your income. You are individual, J. You are richer individual. So delta principle says that if you can obtain new distribution from the old distribution through regressive transfers, it means that the new distribution is more unequal. This was a fairer distribution. Now you are making it uh, more unequal because you are making poor person even poorer and rich person even richer. So this is more unequal distribution. That is the point of Dalton's principle. Right? So these are the four criteria which any index of inequality measurement should satisfy. Right? This is what I want to do. Thank you, Vita.